Hi folks, this is Kwabna, uh, president of OpenMV. Thanks for taking the time to look at our Kickstarter. And so in this video, I just want to tell you a little bit about the OpenMV Cam N6 and how to use it with our desktop software. All right, so let's take a look at the camera real quick. Uh, so this is the OpenMV Cam N6. Um, hence the, the name is from the STM32 N6 that powers it. And this little guy's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board, a microphone, gigabit ethernet, uh, USB high speed, uh, RAM and flash externally at uh, very high data rates, um, a uh, battery charger here um, and uh, for running off LiPos, and then also you've got accelerometer and gyroscope on the back and an SD card slot that's very fast at uh, up to 100 megabytes a second or so. Um, and then the main feature is the removable camera module setup. So you can take off the normal global shutter camera that comes with it and you can put on our Prophecy Gen X320 sensor for event vision, or you can use the new uh, dual thermal and global shutter camera that we have. Uh, so this one will give you kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, the ability to see, you know, uh, in IR and color vision at the same time. And then we've also got the FLIR boson for high resolution, uh, high frame rate thermal imaging. Uh, which is pretty neat. Obviously a huge sensor kind of dwarfs the whole board. And then the FLIR Lepton for those folks who want to have a more price conscious thermal sensing solution. And this sensor is available in our store. It is not part of the Kickstarter directly. Um, anyway, so uh, that's the OpenMV Cam N6. All right, let's take a look at how to use it. All right, so now this is OpenMV IDE. Uh, what you see going on here is that we've got four different windows, and so we've got the uh, video from the OpenMV cam. Uh, you can see me right there. Hello. Uh, so uh, the camera, this is outputting from our uh, Global Shutter PAG uh, 7936 sensor. Um, image quality isn't yet perfect. We still got a lot of ISP tuning to do, but this is kind of where we are right now on launch, and we hope to have it, uh, you know, super uh, amazing uh, by the time we ship. Uh, but anyway, we've got something usable so far coming out of the camera. Uh, and then on these other views here, you have a little histogram window that kind of shows off what the color, you know, rates of what the camera sees. And you can switch to different, um, you know, color spaces, for example. Just check out what that is. And then also if you select things here, you can kind of see what that, what the color is inside that region. Uh, this is useful for color tracking algorithms and whatnot. Uh, kind of the uh, bread and butter features of the OpenMV Cam. And then on the left side here, you have our coding window where you can write your Python program and a serial terminal where you can see what the camera's doing. Uh, and so in this example right here, we're just streaming video from it. Uh, this is the generic hello world. Uh, the way it works is you import modules that kind of define what your sensor is along with, you know, time, you know, the standard Python time module. And the sensor module allows you to do things like set the frame rate, uh, resolution, uh, skip frames, and etc. So right here, we're setting the uh, resolution to 640 by 480, and we're setting it to uh, RGB 565, which is a image format um, for color. You can also do things like set the image to grayscale and get a grayscale output if you want. Um, as you can notice here, the frame rate for grayscale goes way up. So we were doing 80 frames a second, and the second we switched to grayscale, now we're doing 120 frames a second, more or less, coming out of the camera sensor. And that's just because the load on the processor decreases. This is a one byte per pixel image versus a two byte per pixel. Great. Um, well, RGB 565 is two bytes per pixel. Um, anyway, uh, beyond that, uh, you can also see when we stop the script, you can kind of see some stuff from MicroPython that quickly goes by. And then the main way that you write your code is uh, to do just basically a while loop and you call this snapshot function and that will return an image object that you see on the screen. And then from there, you can do all kinds of fun stuff like drawing lines and uh, objects on it. So let's take a look at that real quick right now with yellow. Uh, so this little script here is everything we need to run a person detector of yellow. And we're just gonna go through that real quick. Uh, so let's get it started and see what it looks like. Alrighty then, let's just uh, turn off that. Okay, so uh, we can see the algorithm running YOLO on board, and you can see it detecting me and drawing the bounding box around. 
Um, and so that is built on, uh, this is a yellow V5 model trained on the open data set from FLIR uh, for thermal imaging, uh, person detection, and regular RGB camera detection. Um, so we've just been using a model. Uh, it's not necessarily the best person detection model, but it kind of shows off what we're able to do on board. And as you can see, we're getting about 20 frames a second uh, with this uh, color image here. And then if we were to uh, disable the frame buffer, which um, kind of costs some speed, and we turn that off, uh, we can see it goes slightly up to about 30 frames a second. And that's running the YOLO model on board. All right, cool. Let's stop that and restart. All right, great. And so that's an example of this system running YOLO. So let's just sit down real quick and go through what is going on here for the audience. Uh, so in this example, uh, we're importing some new libraries. Uh, in particular, we're importing uh, ML post processing. Uh, this is a library that allows you to, uh, as you can see, it, it doesn't really detect me if I'm too close to the camera. If I'm farther away, it does a better job. Uh, but anyway, um, and that's because this data set is trained on people walking around on the street. Uh, so this is not a standard person detection model that's meant for uh, close-up. Uh, anyway, uh, so in this example here, um, we're basically setting the frame rate, uh, well, cap frame rate 30 FPS, we're capping it at that. Uh, we can go higher, for example, if we wanted to. Um, and we're also setting uh, the resolution to VGA and RGB 565. And then one other thing we're doing is we're windowing the image to 480 by 480 um, or so, just to make it easier for the network to uh, be run on the image um, versus giving it a widescreen image, for example. Um, and so these things are kind of built into the sensor control, allowing you to kind of control the camera sensor and make it uh, work like you want. And then after that, we're using something called ML model. Uh, and so this is our ML framework. Uh, this basically will invoke the uh, MPU in the back end for you. And so we're able to pass something called a ROM file system path. Uh, what we've done is using OpenMV IDE, you can build the models into the flash of the microcontroller. And then those appear as a file um, basically in the system. Even though this is not a FAT file system or anything like that, it's, um, it's a linear file, like imagine a zip file format, uh, but basically in Flash. So we have all the different assets you want um, allocated in Flash, and then these can be accessed. And in particular, because they're all in linear address space um, with memory alignment rules, uh, the MPU is able to execute them in place and run the model without having to load them into RAM and such. And so this is really, really helpful for running models on microcontrollers, which have uh, lower, re lower amounts of resources. Um, anyway, uh, the script becomes pretty simple after that. Uh, just like we saw before, you take a picture via snapshot, and then you're able to run the prediction method on it. And so this will take the image, and uh, predict actually accepts a list of tensors, and then outputs a list of tensors. And so in this example, we're giving it a list, which is just one image object because the model's only accepting one image. And uh, we're running that. And then we're using a YOLO post-processing callback that will receive the output list of tensors. And then that is going to run, uh, that's going to basically post-process the output of YOLO, which is a very large 2D array, and output a bunch of bounding boxes on that. And once we do that, we go through the bounding boxes and we draw the predictions, which is just drawing a rec with a uh, label on it. And that's how we get to this. So, um, as you can imagine, uh, this functionality uh, works for pretty much any object detector model. And obviously, uh, better trained models will, you know, have better performance, different speed categories, and et cetera. Uh, so, you know, that's all fungible by you, and, and it's all what, you know, you can come up with for building it. But the, uh, the thing for you is that uh, we've made this easy to develop. You don't have to suffer through figuring out how to work with the MPUs, how to do everything in C. We've kind of abstracted it all into Python to make it easy to build. And we take off that frame rate limit, still about the same. Uh, that's the performance. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll have more videos in this series. Um, anyway, uh, and that's the OpenMVCAM N6 in a nutshell and how you're going to be able to perk on it. All right, bye-bye.